it's Thursday the 29th of June 2017. A warm welcome along to Late Night Chat here on uh, United Kingdom Talk Boys and Girls. I am sitting here killing myself laughing. How outrageous is one of your comments already tonight from Gustav? Gustav, who says, can't you sleep either? Just thought I'd log in and see how many more pounds the old duffer has piled on. <laughs> That is the best comment of the year. How blooming well dare you? You are such a ghastly... Are you sure you're not one of those Labour supporters, Gustav? With some of the stuff you come out with, do you? <laughs> I don't think I've piled anything else on, actually. Even though I said to you the other night, um, I'd... Uh, let's just put that on. It's a bit hot in here. So. Even though I said to you the other night that I'd piled on an, a pound last week while weighing it at my Slimmer's World on Tuesday, um, my swimming shorts are even looser now. Not only do I have to do the, 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 the string up at the top, when I put them on and walk over to the urinal to have a little wee before I get in a pool, because I'm, I'm one of those people who likes to have a wee before they get into a pool. Gustav and a lot of the people watching the show tonight, I've got to say, you're coming across as people that would wee in the pool. And we don't like any of that, please. Thank you very much. It's disgusting. I remember years ago, do you remember years ago, they said that they'd got this new stuff that they put in swimming pools, that if you was to wee in there, it will make a colour, like a red colour around you. Huh? <laughs> do you remember that? I never actually saw this happening anywhere. I think it was a lie. Well, the only way you can do it is bleed, isn't it? If you bleed in the pool, then that would be pretty obvious. <laughs> dear, dear me, I like to have a wee before I get in the pool. Anyway, uh, while walking from my bench, there was no one else in the change room, while walking from my bench to the urinal, the shorts actually fell down below my bottom. So it's good, good news. The weight is falling off. I'm not piling on as you suggest, Gustav. How rude you are this morning. You really are. God's sake. Look at this. I've seen this now. Do you eat cabbage? And not one of my favourite uh, items to eat, to be honest. But um, it says here in uh, today's Metro, because I've got my... And it is today. Look, look, we're all up to date today. Hang on a minute. Where's the date? Has it got a date on it? One moment, please. Has it got a date on here? Oh, it hasn't. Must have a date on there, mustn't it? Don't they have a date at the top? No, there's no date on this. Oh, this could be ten weeks old. I don't know, is it? Oh, there it is. Date. Thursday. There are. Look, all up to date today. Look, no old stories today. Thursday. And it says in here, in today's Metro, ever needed to hurry to the toilet after eating a meal? Well, I have that all the time. Honestly, no, because I've got a bit of IBS, which isn't, to be honest, it's fine at the moment. It's not bad at all. But I've learnt to not go out immediately after a meal because that's when it starts. If I have a meal, then shortly afterwards, I have to make a trip to the lavatory. That's any meal at all. Funny, isn't it? It's strange. Anyway, it says here, um, blame the taste buds that line your intestine if you need to hurry to the toilet after eating a meal. Now, what's that word there? Jeez. En what's that? En Enterocormaffin cells. Entomocormaffin cells? I don't know what that says. Produce most of the body body's serotonin. Oh, didn't you used to get that from ecstasy? <laughs> is, is, isn't that the same thing? <laughs> um, which regulates mood, appetite and sleep. Dr. David Julius, I bet he's important, of the University of California, and his team found that these receptors have for scenting irritants such as Ali Isoloclant in cabbage and stress hormones such as adrenaline. When exposed to these, they pump out serotonin, causing the brain to speed up bowel movements, including diarrhea or vomiting in extreme cases. Have you had this after cabbage? I haven't. Load of old rubbish. It might also give you discomfort as a way as letting you know you've got some in kind of inflammatory episode going on. So isn't that interesting? Uh, do you notice that at all? When you have a bit of cabbage? Eh? Although most of you probably live on burgers and chips, I would imagine, most of the time, don't you? Carl, do you got to eat properly, dear? Eat properly. 
Let's say hello to some early people with this uh, tonight. Hello to Alan Russell. Good evening, Alan. Peter Hydes is there. Lovely to talk to you on the phone the other day, Peter. It really was um, Tuesday night, wasn't it? Yes. Peter says he's gained two pounds. Oh, no. Have you really? But do you know how you gained those two pounds? There is. Are you on some sort of diet then? Are you slim as well? I can't remember now. Or Weight Watchers or one of those. Because if you are on one of those things, the, the, the important thing is perhaps to, to, to find out how you gained it. Do you know how you gained that? For example, uh, my friend Adam the Plumber has also gained, oh, I hope he doesn't mind me telling you this, a pound this week. But he knows it was due to a pizza. And don't forget, I've forgotten the cake that you mentioned this week, Adam, just in case you're with us. I don't know if you're with us tonight. He had a cake and a pizza in the same week. I mean, you're just asking for trouble, aren't you? You really are. A cake and a pizza in the same week. Madness, dear. Madness. So he's gained a pound as well this week. Although, Peter, I think you've hit the top mark there with two pounds. Dear me. Have you noticed? Have a look down, Peter, where you're sitting. Is there now dents in the floor where you walked over to that chair earlier? That's a giveaway. That is... <laughs> that's a bit of a giveaway, that is. Ladies in high-heeled shoes, they make dents in the floor, don't I? I won't have any high-heeled shoes in this house, I'm sorry, no. I'm not having anyone dressed as women in this house, whether it's women or men. I'm not having it, love. There's something very wrong about that. I've got my own, give me my own. Uh, greetings to Rod Brown, who's with us today. Perry Sutton says, uh, on the subject of my opening, that's the video opening, that is not, not my, you know... Uh, he says, is it my version of the test card? Now, that is the countdown, Perry. Very important to have a countdown before the show so that you know you've got five minutes to prepare yourself, turn the tele television off, put the kids and the pets to bed and sit down and enjoy my worldwide programme. That's why the countdown's there. So you don't miss anything. So you know it starts at zero and you won't miss anything as long as you're there by zero. So it gives you a five minute warning. Yes. Uh, good morning to Claire Norton, or good evening to Claire Norton this morning. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Alan says, uh, let's have a look. Uh, Claire's there. Peter's gained two pounds, as I say. Let me have a look. I'm just uh, scrubbing along there. Oh, we have an awful lot of people there. Hello to Jerry. Jamie Clark's there. Greetings, Jamie. Uh, Nathan's there. Hello, Nathan. Everyone's there tonight. Angela Warren, one of our wonderful Manilow girls. I was given a lovely gift today, Angela. I'll tell you a little bit about it later on. Uh, Vectis is there. Ashley. Rachel's there. Rachel's there. I'll tell you, I saw Rachel earlier today. I'll tell you about that. Uh, Paul Watts. Greetings, Paul. Nice to see you, sir. Hello, Paul. Mark Kempner. Diane's there. Hello, Diane. You're always there, aren't you, my love? Little Diane's always there. And uh, Perry says, or oh, five minutes to switch channels. Oh, really? Yeah, but you haven't, have you? See, you haven't. You're still there. You, you think you're being clever saying that, but you didn't switch channels. You're still there. It's like these people that ring up radio stations. Uh, you hear them on LBC all the time. Oh, I've been listening to you for years and you're really bad. And, and they're still listening. They're still listening. How strange and mysterious is that? Well, I've had a bit of a nice day, boys and girls. Uh, I started off uh, by going swimming. Uh, unfortunately, I, went, well, I, I ended up there. At this, uh, greetings to Tony. Hello, Tony. You've just been on holiday, haven't you? Had a nice time. Nice time. Now, I can't remember where you went. My mate's just been on holiday. He's been to Malaga. Or as I like to call it, Malagline, because it's it's devilish there. Awful place. And they had a day trip to Terrible Melinos. Have you ever been there? Terrible Melinos. We've renamed that. He said it was absolutely awful place. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. Of course, he's used to going on these five-star hotels and what have you, isn't he? So when he, when he goes in a one-star place with a window that op overlooks a car park, he didn't handle that very well at all. But he went and he had a nice time. Um, hello to Julian as well, who's with us uh, from Spain. 24 degrees centigrade there. What's that about? Oh, it was 24, 48, 58, 68, 78. Take away a little bit. So it's about 74, 75 at night time. That's a bit too hot at night, though, isn't it? Don't you think? Do you sleep naked on the bed, Julian? Are you a naked sleeper? You all have air conditioning in Spain, surely, don't you? Anyway, I went up the swimming pool. 
Um, and I went up there when they had aqua on, which is lots of um, uh, elderly ladies generally, mainly. Uh, there's a couple of others in there. And they do their exercise. And the more there is, the more of the pool they take up. Today it was three quarters of the pool. But there was no one else in the pool. So that was okay. So I started up. And it's a very narrow lane that we swim in. If they've got three quarters of the pool, it's a very, very narrow lane. It's okay for one person. At a squeeze, you can do two. So I started up, down, up, down, up, down. I never get bored in the pool. Funny that, isn't it? And yet, well, on the occasions that I did gym, not recently, a few years ago now, I, I, I tried gym three times. It's so boring lifting bits of bloody metal up. It really is. Especially if there's no one decent to look at as well. You know, some tasty bloke looking similar like Cristiano Ronaldo lifting something in front of you in a pair of small shorts is quite nice to look at, isn't it? But I get bored in the gym, so bored. And yet, I do not get bored going up and down in the swimming pool. So up and down, up and down, I'm going. I got to about 30, <clears throat> and then I got to the end, turned around, and I spied another woman getting in. I thought, oh, God, here we go. Anyway, so I've started coming that way. She's coming that way. And we got in the middle, and I kind of pulled over slightly to the right, and she pulled over slightly to the right. I thought, oh, we've got a good one in here. Two people in the very narrow pool that actually respect each other. So that works. It is very tight, and now and again you get a little bit of a nudge, but that's okay, because you're completely aware that the person who's going the other way is actually trying to avoid you. So that was fine. So we're carrying on, and I got to about length 50, and some fat young girl got in with the boyfriend. The boyfriend starts swimming towards you in the middle of the lane, Arms all over the place. I thought, right. Go on, mate. And uh, I think, yeah, I was coming the other way. It was going well. So I started to I'm, I'm kind of going over to the left. And I thought, no, he's not going to move over at all. Okay. And as he's come down like that, I've put my arm out. So it's gone bang like that. And so, oh, oh, oh. And it's gone like that. I didn't even look round. See? Not respecting other people's space. Why? Why are they like that? Followed by the fat girlfriend that was going down. I, might, I, I was going to offer her to take her to Slim as well with me, dear. But they don't respect other people's space. Me and that girl had been going up and down for 10, 15 minutes. No problem whatsoever. He gets in. He's in the middle of the lane. Arms everywhere. You know, and when I say arms, they're like this. He's doing the, the stroke like that. Now, if there's someone that way, you've got to swim like that to get out of the way. But no. Anyway, they managed. <laughs> Shows you how fit they were. They managed about six lengths each. And then they got out. They couldn't handle any more. Good. Goodbye. Rude people. It's, it's just so unnecessary, isn't it? So that was the swimming. Um, they've got some new... I noticed uh, uh, two places that I've noticed now are having firework done in. And I, I, I'm, I, I can only assume that it's all due to this business of that... A terrible disaster uh, that we had in Kensington um, a, a couple of weeks ago with that tower block um, caught fire. And over 70 people lost their lives in there. I mean, it's just horrendous, isn't it, that? I mean, literally burnt alive. I don't know if I told you this story or not, but um, I was listening to the radio one night um, just after this has happened, and a bloke called in. And he says, I've, I've lost my brother. Uh, and it, he didn't say it like he was shouting and screaming down the phone. He was to the to the radio uh, presenter. I think it was Nick Abbott on Saturday night, possibly. And um, he said, well, he said, how do you know? He said, I was talking to him on the phone and the bloke, he was still in the flat and he'd been told to stay there. And he was screaming down the phone that the floor was so hot. He couldn't stand on it. I mean, can and, and then that's the last they heard of him. Can you? What an awful way to go. I, I just cannot imagine what it would be like sitting in there, waiting and hoping that a ladder is going to get up to you. And the ladders weren't long enough, were they? The hoses weren't long enough. They couldn't get to them. No other way out. And it's just horrendous. 
It really is. In fact, I, 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 and I, I, I disgustedly have seen um, a story in today's uh, Mail Online. Now, check this, right? So you, so you know the disaster, the fire, the flats, 70-odd people died, yeah? A man, check this out in today's Daily Mail, a man has been arrested on suspicion of fraudulently attempted to gain money and housing by pretending he had lost family members in the Grenville Tower, Grenfell Tower fire. In the immediate aftermath of the inferno, the 52-year-old was assigned family liaison officers after he claimed that he lost his wife and son in the fire. He attempted to claim financial support, stating he had lost all his property. Detectives from the police have since arrested him on suspicion of fraudulently attempting to gain money and house. Isn't that disgusting? It is disgusting. Do you know, I hate dishonesty. I absolutely hate dishonesty. I can't stand this. I mean, this is this is dishonesty, dishonesty at its worst. It really is. Officers began investigating after they realised they were inconsistencies with the man's stories. They spoke with residents uh, in the flats who confirmed he didn't live there. Relatives of the resident of the flat the man claimed to live with have been spoken to by their family liaison officers and made aware of this investigation. It's just disgusting. Office officers have also traced the address in Bromley, where the man was living at the time of the fire, which has been independently evidenced. It has also been established the man does not even have a wife or child. I mean, it's just awful. What, what happens? Does he get thrown in prison for that? Well, he's been arrested. I don't know. Let's have a look down the bottom. Do you get thrown in prison for something like that? I don't know. I mean, he was arrested on suspicion of fraud. That, that's a, he's, he's in custody at West London Police. How can you do something like that? It's just awful, isn't it? Sick, sick, sick. And I, I do, I really hate dishonesty. I can give you so many examples of, of, of dishonesty that I, that I know. You know, people claiming money that they're not supposed to have. People pretending to have this, that and the other. People claiming, you know, claiming stuff off insurance companies. Like every time they go on holiday, they lose a camera or an expensive bracelet. It's disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. I think I feel I I feel uh, I I think that much of those sort of people. It's dis it really upsets me dishonesty. And of course, you know, that's why half your blooming car insurances are so expensive. Because of dishonest people claiming money for accidents. Whiplash, you know. <laughs> not quite sure what a whiplash is. My guess if you've really got it, it's not something to joke about. And part of the reason is these these solicitors firms that ring you up all the time. Oh, did you have an accident? And I get it. I, get, I still get it now. I had an accident. Um, one, two, three, four, five, about six, about six, seven years ago. I still get the occasional call. I'm talking to a year now. But they still ring me up. So oh, you had an accident about seven years ago. Oh, that's right. And it wasn't your fault. That's right. Well, we've got some money waiting for you here, they say. <clears throat> and I said, that's OK. There's nothing wrong. Oh, did did you not have any injuries? No, not at all. Are you sure? Because there's money here. And they're, they're egging you on to make a claim. And you make that claim and it goes up for everyone else. This is going on all the time. Why don't people do something about it? And it's dishonest. Claiming for stuff that you are not entitled to or, you know, because you, can, you think you can make a, a quick buck. Because everyone else pays. Everyone else pays when someone claims something dishonestly. But that bloke who pretended his lost family in the Grenville, Grenfell, is it Gren, it's Grenfell, how do you say it, Grenfell or Grenville? I think it's Grenfell, in that, in that fire is just the worst of the worst, isn't it? It really is. Um, let's pick up some messages um, here. Ah, uh, oh, Tony's been to Rhodes in Greece. Oh, I haven't been to Greece. I've never been to Greece. Oh, I've been to London and California, but I've never been to Greece. I've 
never been to Greece. And see how I make songs. Oh, I've, I've written a song about my cat. I've written a song about my cat, Katie the Cat, who spends entire hours and hours either staring into face or walking around in circles. It's Ice Ice Katie. Check it out. Listen, check it out. I'll add a bit of echo for effect. Bum, 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 bum. Ice, ice, Katie. Bum, 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 Ice, ice, Katie. What do you reckon? <laughs> it's a song written all about my cat. I thought that was excellent myself. Um, good evening to Rory, who's joining us tonight. Hello, Rory. Uh, Jason Carter's here. Hello, Jason. My favourite desti destination abroad, Alan wants to know. I've had some wonderful holidays abroad all over the place, Alan. Um, I can't give you... I don't think I can give you one, actually. Um, <clears throat> Florida. I love Florida. I love the whole Disney thing. I love the way the Florida, Florida, is Floridonian, Flor, Floridonians, would you say? I love the way the people in Florida live. It's quite fast, massive, great roads. Um, it's very spread out. It's all bungalows. It's not really flats or anything. I love Florida. I like Florida. I went two years ago to Israel. I thought that was fantastic. Everything you learned about at school was there do with religion and of course other stuff as well the dead sea uh, you know uh, the the big castle and all that business wonderful israel i loved israel and i love australia three places there <clears throat> so out of all the places that i've been uh there's three there oh one other the island of mustique mustique you've got to have a lot of money to live there i don't think i could ever ever afford to live there beautiful place mustique so there's four places there. oh and norfolk island which you could live in Norfolk Island. That's part of Australia. It's kind of under their umbrella. Um, you could live on Norfolk Island and it wouldn't cost you too much. You, if you sold a house here, you could buy one there and probably still have half the money left over. Wonderful place, but no work, you see. And they are in a little bit of a, a money difficulty over there. So they're, they're the places that I like best, OK? Um, lovely Tony, I'll see you tomorrow night. How did your diet go? Well, it's not a diet. See, that's the thing. It's not a diet. Um, it's 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 a lifestyle change. You change what you're... I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry at all. I've just had this massive rice risotto thing that I just uh, uh, cooked from scratch. You know, all vegetables and stuff like that. And the rice risotto. I burnt the bottom of the pan, though. Christ, the entire house stinks now of burnt pan. I didn't take much notice of it. I thought, well, I'll eat it anyway. It's got like a burnt taste to it. But it's OK. <laughs> it's OK. <laughs> uh, so far, Tony, I've lost eight pounds. It was nine pounds, but I put one on the, uh, this week. So it's probably back up to not. I'm hoping it's back down to nine. So I've probably lost nine pounds since you last saw me. That's not bad, is it? Look at you, skinny as a rake. You sit there, you eat your burgers, you crisp, drink your pints of lager. Nothing happens like my nephew. 20 years old, he eats all that crap and drinks like a fish. Never puts on a pound, it's outrageous. Julian's got no air conditioning. Ceiling flans, 80, 80 Fahrenheit in his room. Oh, it's too much, Julian. Can't you get some air conditioning there? Why haven't you got air conditioning? Or is it a little bit too pricey? I don't know what the price of air conditioning is in Spain. You go to, like, Australia and um, uh, uh, America, and they've all got it. Everyone's got it there, haven't they? Um, lots of people commenting on that story there about the man pretending to be a a, a Grenfell Tower victim. Tony says, what a sick pig trying to fraud money. Oh, it's awful. Rachel Rachel says, what a low life. Jason says, there's some sick people in this world. Uh, I, I hope he does go to prison. I really do. I really do. And, uh, to be fair, he's probably not the only one who's done it. I expect there's a lot of people trying to do it. Jamie says it's Grenfell. Thank you, Jamie. Grenfell. Kevin Webster's there tonight. Hello, Kevin. Um, uh, Tony likes the likes the, the Katie the Cat song, do you? Bum, 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 bum. Ice, ice, Katie. <laughs> Alan, have you been to Israel? Have you been there? Hello to Tony Power. I've never been to me. It was by Charlene. That's correct. 
Oh, I've been to somewhere in California. Maybe I should try that one at the karaoke tomorrow night. Eh? I, I would need a partner to sing that one. Someone who's quite good looking, I think I would have to be. But, you know, sometimes I stand there, you know, and I look around. And I think I'm the best looking one in there. I really do. Do you? <laughs> no, I couldn't take your dinner, Tony. Tony Tony and his wife offered me round to dinner the other day. Well, that, that's a nice thing, isn't it? Thank you, Kevin. I did see a video um, passing around on the internet this week. I, but now, I, was it in Reading or somewhere like that? And it's this bloke, he's crossing the road and he gets mowed down by a bus. And it, I, don't, to be, I don't think it was the bloke's fault at all. That bus came tearing round that corner. There's some really bad bus drivers around now. I don't know who's teaching these people. Dear, dear me. Um, OK, so I was just telling you about my day. Uh, so I finished the swimming pool. Then I popped down to the train station and got some more papers for Katie the Cat. Regular viewers to the show will know I have a very incontinent old cat. And uh, I have an area of the kitchen which is covered in newspapers. She is kind of restricted. I've got a little door. It's not a door. It's like a picture, an old picture. Big, big, you know, like a, like a picture like that that I use as a door. And uh, so she's restricted to the area. And several times a day I have to change all the newspapers. Um, and uh, so I have to go up to the, pop up to the train station to see if I've got any left over. And I managed to get two bags full today, so I'm quite pleased about that. Uh, then I went to the bank. <clears throat> I am wondering, actually, when I go and collect these newspapers, I, I'm a little bit concerned that they're going to keep seeing me. Do I need a disguise? That's the question. Do you think I should get some sort of disguise when I go and collect those newspapers from the train station? Not, they're not, don't get me wrong here. I'm not stealing newspapers. Everyone is allowed a newspaper. You go up there, you take a couple, maybe a couple for friends, but possibly... You're not permitted to take as many as I take. Do you know what I mean? I'm not nicking the Daily Mail. I'm, these are free newspapers available to all. The difference is I go up there and have a couple of bags worth full. <laughs> and that, generally, a couple of carrier bags will last, Kate, this is how much I get through, uh, will last about half a week. That is two carrier bags full of newspapers. Seriously, it's that bad. But, you know, you've got to look after the elderly, haven't you? Even if it's an elderly cat. Do I need a disguise? You know, perhaps maybe I could get one of those joke things, you know, where they've got the big nose and the moustache and the glasses like that. <laughs> or will that make me look even more obvious? Maybe I should just keep changing my jacket or clothes. Sometimes I wear glasses, sometimes a hat or women's clothes. Maybe I should go up there in drag. What do you reckon? I haven't done drag. Well, I have done drag once. Not, not as in a show. I just dressed up like a woman. Actually, is Matt around today? Matt, perhaps you'd like me to dress up as a woman. Is, is Matt coming down tomorrow night to the karaoke? Would it, would it help if I dressed up as a woman? Because he doesn't seem to fancy me as a man. I know he's one of those straight lads, isn't he? But if I dress up as a woman... Because some people like that, you know. Oh, yes, dear. Oh, my God. Have you seen the boyfriends of some of these trannies? Have you seen them? Oh, they're to die for. The trouble is, I've been told that if you get a fella like that who likes trannies, the problem is they want you to dress like it all the time. And I can't see myself getting out of bed and putting on knickers and high heels. I, ju I just can't see it somehow. But, you know, if needs be, I may have to go along that route if something don't happen soon. <laughs> Hey, thank you, Tony. Hey, Chrissy, leave them papers alone. <laughs> so I got my newspapers and I popped into the bank and at last I paid some money into my sister's account. And the reason I had to do that, back in April, can you believe that April, it was my niece's birthday, my niece, uh, Tracy, who's 30, she's 30 years old now. To me, she looks like she's still five years old. You know, she's that little girl I was holding her hand and walking across the car park in, in, in Bracknell when, 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 uh, when her mum, my sister, brought her down. 
but she's 30 now. She has a family of her own, a lovely husband, uh, three children. There's George, who's four. He finished school today. Uh, no, sorry, he finished nursery school today. And apparently they had a bit of a party, which was quite nice, George. Um, I, I Last time I was up there, I had the, the absolute privilege of going with my sister to collect him from nursery. And that was just fantastic. And it, my, my, my niece was paying. It was a private nursery, actually. And she pays um, uh, quite a lot of money. Not, not loads and loads, but a lot of money, you know, for him to go to this nursery. Uh, and a beautiful place. And you, you go in the little room. And if you've got children, you'll know this already. You see, I haven't done this before. I haven't done this before. So there's my sister, and she said, oh, this is my brother. Oh, hello. Uh, yeah, children are nearly ready. And we walked in, and other parents are standing there. And there's these little little chairs and little tables and pens, colouring pens and books and plasticine and sand and everything everywhere. And the children look wonderfully happy. That is the nursery you want your children to go to, isn't it? And of course, as soon as he spotted me, he just come running over and hit me. What's all that about? Chris, bang, bang, bang on my chest. <laughs> oh, it was, it was lovely. And he's left there now. So he left there today. Um, and they had some sort of party because he goes to um, primary school next year. So he's four. Uh, she's got a little girl, Emily, who's three. Now, uh, we have to be a bit careful with Emily because she dislocates easily. Shouldn't laugh, really. She dislocates, yes. So when I'm swinging the others around by their by their arms or legs, which I regularly do when I go and visit them, I'm going back up there sometime in September. Um, and uh, uh, I can't do that with her. So I, I So she comes, of course, she comes over to be swung. And uh, even before I, I, I pick her up, that my niece comes over and reminds me, oh, don't forget she dislocates you. So what I do is I pick her up, you see. I pick her up and give her cuddles and, like, swing her like that, but not by her arms. Because she's been up the hospital a couple of times with dislocated arms and things like that. And just hanging off like that. It's very good, actually. They go up the hospital, and I think one of the first things they do, they give them some sort of pain relief. And um, my niece... What's that there? OK, my niece, um, she uh, made a video of Emily, the little girl, <clears throat> when they'd given her pain relief and she was off her head. She, was, uh, she looked like she take well, she had taken drugs, I suppose, isn't she? But, you know, medically type, you know, she hadn't gone out and swallowed a couple of pills or something. They'd given her some sort of stuff and she was like, yeah, yeah, like that. <laughs> <laughs> Poor little Emily. And then the doctor come and he started, and she's screaming her head off and he did the click thing and immediately she starts laughing because the pain has gone. Isn't it clever how they do that? So I wonder if they ever get that wrong. You know, so they click and instead of relieving the pain, it hurts even more. I wonder if that ever goes wrong. And she's just had another little baby. James is his name. And he's just uh, a few weeks old. So that's that's my niece there. Uh, anyway, it was her birthday in April. And I promised her, I said, um, she, she had mentioned to my sister she was going to get a National Trust family ticket. So I looked it up and um, and I rung her up. I said, for your birthday, I want to get you that family ticket. And she said, are you sure? I said, yes. And ever since then, well... That one of the reasons I said, well, I won't get it yet. I'll wait till the baby's born because otherwise you'll have to add on another name. And that they might not allow that. I don't know how it works. So wait till the baby's born and then I'll get you the ticket. Well, the baby was born, I think, in uh, end of April, beginning of May. And ever since then, I've been meaning to go to the bank and put the money in. But I, I'd done it today at last. So I did that uh, at the bank. Uh, then I went for lunch. And I was meeting two people, Rachel and Anne, who I'm doing a little job for, or I'm doing a little job with uh, on July the 29th. Now, I, I don't know if I've got the poster here. Let's have a look. Let me see if I've got this poster here. Hang on a minute. Uh, how do I do that? Is that that one? There it is. Yeah, that's the one. One minute. One minute, one minute. How do I do that? Cut. That's it. There we go. Uh, yes. So there it is. We are doing this on Saturday the 29th of June. 
at 8 o'clock. It goes on 8 o'clock till about 11.30, okay, 11.30. And we're raising money for the Barry Manilow Music Project, Pro Project Cancer Research and Dogs Trust, okay. Saturday the 29th of July from 8 o'clock. Now, that's in Woking in Surrey. There is a train and buses right outside. I think you from train station. I don't think you can walk from the train station, actually. I don't know. But that's where it is. So if you want to come along to that, we're raising money there. And uh, it finishes sort of reasonably early, uh, 11.30. There's a late night train. Goes back. I think you'd have to leave at sort of around about 10 to 11 to catch the last train back, though. All right. So we're doing that. Anyway, uh, so I met up with the two ladies. And... Um, just to have a look around the place where I was setting up and the manager was there and his son works uh, in front of the bar. And it's a nice place. It's a nice size. They've got a pool table, but the pool table will move a sort of a, a, a small stage, which kind of goes up, you know, about just about six inches. But that's six inches can be enough, of course, can the ladies? So we know that. Uh, six inches should be enough for that. So we'll set up there. And it's all very nice. That's all sorted. I had uh, baked beans on jacket potato without butter. Very important not to have the butter. Yes. Very, very bad butter. Disastrous, in fact, for your weight. Uh, so I had that. The ladies had some chips and uh, omelette, I think. And uh, Anne was there, as always, with different coloured hair. Anne has pink hair. Pink and, I think it was pink and turquoise today. She colours her hair. We had a little bit of a little bit of a chat and a laugh there. It's always a pleasure to see them. We were only there for about an hour. But, you know, that's, that's enough time, you know, to just catch up with friends and and arrange things and all that. They'll have a tombola there, and a darts, like, like a kind of darts competition type thing. So that's all going on that night, and as I say, that's to raise money uh, for this lot of little lot of thing, the Barry Manilow Music Project, uh, Project Cancer Research, and the Dogs Trust. Oh, 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 the Dogs Trust. I wonder if there'd be any dogs there that night. I saw a few walking around Waitrose today, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> Tony's going to bed. Good night, Tony. Night, Tony. Hello to Dino and hello to Helen. Thank you, Dino and everyone else who have shared the video on their wall this evening. That's always appreciated. And it's very kind of you to do so. I never, ever ask you to do that. But if you do, then thank you very much. OK, so I had my lunch there. Uh, they gave me, which I don't have with me. I've, I've actually left it in a car. A beautiful drawing someone has drawn a picture of of barry manilow they showed me he said what 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 picture here do you think's best and i looked at it and straight away i said oh that one with a smile they said right we want you to have this i said oh no i can't take that uh as as a as a thank you for doing this this charity event that i'm doing i might not turn up now i might just keep the picture <laughs> I'd never hear the end of that. Rachel would come here banging the door down, wouldn't she? She'd be like those people on Can't Pay Well, take it away. Banging on the door like that, you'd go, wouldn't you? Eh? Dear me. So that was very nice of them to uh, give me that picture. Anyway, jumped back in the car. Uh, went down to Waitrose to do my shopping. I had to get uh, shopping today because I was making... I've, I've made um, a vegetable risotto tonight. Now, last time I did it, I just used normal rice. But I thought I'd try and get some of that risotto rice. So I've got my vegetables as usual. With some blueberries, strawberries, fat-free yoghurt. And I I'm looking for this rice. And where's the risotto rice? I'm going up and down. And you know, sometimes you're looking for something and you're blind to it, aren't you? you it's there. You just can't see it. And eventually I found it. And it was in a box. Everything else was in a packet. But the risotto rice, or the one I first saw, was in a box with foreign writing on it. So I picked this up and I, and I thought, blimey, that's, that must be a tin. You know, is it like a tin of rice that you open up? And at that point, a boy came walking past, you know, a Waitrose boy. And they all seem to, they're so helpful in there. I've said this so many times before. When you're walking around Waitrose, a, 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 a shopping trolley's coming the other way. You avoid each other. You don't. Push with all your might as quick as you can to get through and completely ignore everyone else around you. No, like they do in Sainsbury's. I hate it there. And you've you've seen them in there. Those great big fat young things pushing around at 25 miles an hour. And God help you if you get in your way. No, it's respectful in Waitrose. And the staff are exactly the same as that. And he walked past and I said, excuse me, this rice here, is it in a tin? Because, of course, the box was sealed. You, you couldn't see. And he's, he's 
picked it up and he says, well, I don't think so. He said, what I think they do with that is they compact it so much that it actually feels like you're carrying a brick or a tin in there. I said, OK, then. He said, we got some more there. And that was in a bag. And, and indeed, it said I didn't see it the first time. There was actually diff three different varieties. There was the Waitrose own brand, which I probably usually would have bought. But I was attracted this, to this box for some reason. So I put it in my, my shopping bag and carried on. I didn't stay for a cup of tea this time. Uh, so I got the rest of the shop in, paid for it, came through, uh, got back in the car, drove home. And when I got home, I, I, had to, I couldn't go straight in the garage uh, because I had, I had the newspapers and all the shopping to take in. So I parked my car and there was all these men working, nice men. Oh, my God, yeah. Two of them were really nice. They were installing water meters. Now, I, I got a water meter here. I think it's about three years ago. I halved what I pay for water by having a meter installed. I think at the time, my rates were about £420 a year. I had a meter installed that went down to about £180 a year. It's now about 205 a year, but it's, it's certainly worth having a water meter put in, especially if you are in a house with several bedrooms and you're the only one there. It will make a huge difference. Just don't walk the garden every single night. You know, Be a bit careful with that. Remember, you're on a meter. Every drop you use will be metered. So I had that. Um, uh, came back inside, bought my stuff in, had some strawberry bana strawberries and bananas with fat-free yoghurt on it. I do like the... F ah, fat-free yoghurt. Now, I've got three items in my fridge, ladies. Perhaps you'll help me here. I've got quark, which is like a fat-free soft cheese in like a large pot. I've got fat-free fromage fray from France, that's a Waitrose one, and I've got fat-free yoghurt. Okay, so those three items there. Is it me, or do they all taste exactly the same? Because <laughs> I'm... <laughs> I have noticed, I'm sure they all taste exactly the same, but with different words on the front. Does anyone else know anything about this? If so, I would be very interesting to, to hear what you've got to say about that. I'm sure all this stuff tastes exactly the same. So that's fat-free yogurt, fat-free fromage fray, and quark, which is fat-free, very uh, soft cheese. All taste the same to me. Anyone else thought that? Hello to Leon, who's joining us tonight. Greetings, Leon Corrigan. Hope you're well, sir. Rachel said, uh, Yukiko Miha Mia." Moto is the artist of the picture, which I'll show you um, on the next show, OK? I don't have the pictures with me at the moment. Right, so uh, as I say, I had some of that, uh, came back to bed, got up again, and I made my, my vegetable risotto, which was very nice, but I've burnt the bottom of the, of the pan. I say the pan, it's, a, it's actually a glass pan. I mean, how do, how do you manage to get something stuck to the bottom of one of those glass ones? Oh, I don't know. So that, all that took about 45 minutes. Um, the pan was full up, so I had a very large meal tonight, which I'm feeling, actually, to be honest. Um, but it was it was sin-free, as we call it in Slimmer's World. There were no sins in that at all. So I had that, and um, then I came... Then I did some gardening, actually. I went outside. I've been... Um, I've got that... You know that Grow More stuff? It's like a packet of blue powder. And it's basically fertiliser. Because I was saying to the girls at Slimmer's World and also Vivian at church, you know, I've got a lot of plants in the garden now. I mean, it's very, very plant-filled and green, but not many flowers. And so they said to me, um, well, it's either the sun or do you fertilise them? And I'm like, well, no, never. They said, right, try fertiliser, see what happens. So uh, I've got this Grow More stuff and it's like an attachment. It's like a, like, a, like a bottle, like a plastic bottle, and you fill it up with this powder, and then you screw it onto this attachment, clip it onto the end of your hose, and you literally just hose it as you would normally hose a garden. So that's what I did after that. Then I did that. Uh, Ronnie rung up, my mate Ronnie. He's just back from holiday, as I say, in Malaga. And he was coming round tonight, but I think he got stuck doing stuff. So that's OK. Uh, so I waited a bit for him until about up past ten. I thought, well, you're not coming. I'll come up the stairs and uh, uh, do a little late night show. And here I am, chatting away to you. So that was my day today. Very, very busy. Very busy. Leon is lying in the truck, ready for bed over in Malvern tonight here at Truck Fest for the weekend. Hey, oh, do you drive a truck? 
Blimey, that's excellent, driving a truck. One of my um, friends drives a truck. Get this, he was a DJ for like 25 years in the same club. Something went wrong there. I'm not quite sure what went wrong. And um, he lost his job. And from DJing for 25... 30, first he was a hairdresser for a short period of time. Then he was a DJ for 25 years. His name Ian. Ian is his name. And he went from that, he lost his job and thought, well, well I've got to get a job. And he went to train driving great big lorries. And that's what he does now. What an amazing turnaround he's had. So how long have you been... Are you, are you, are you a truck driver? How long have you been doing that? Oh, is that you? picture of you getting married there? That's a nice picture. What a lovely picture of you getting married. I hope to be married one day as well. You never know, do you? Other exciting news. Um, I, I rung up Virgin Media on the off chance. Yesterday it was, actually. And uh, a man in India answered as usual. They're very helpful, they are. Very helpful people. And so there's any chance of any, any more upload speed. He said, oh, have a look what you're on. You're, you're on 200 meg at the moment, aren't you? I said, that's why. He said, well, that's our maximum speed at the moment. Oh, OK. Fair enough. I said, only I've seen three. I've seen people talking about 300 meg. He said, oh, have you, sir? I said, yeah. I said, um, is that available? He said, well, no, not really. It's not available at the moment, sir. Just a moment. And he went offline. He come back again. And he says, um, <clears throat> he says, no, it's not really available at the moment. I said, well, if it was available, how much extra is it? He said, it costs you another £2 a month. I said, have you got that right? £2 a month? He said, yes. I said, well, can I have it? Just a moment. OK, so, well, yeah, we can offer that for you. I said, I, uh, this hasn't been advertised. He said, no, it's not advertised at the moment, sir. He said, but you can have it. So how lucky was that? So on Monday, and for extra two quid a month, it goes from 200 to 300 meg a month. And I think the speed goes from upload from 10 to 20. See, upload speed is what I'm after. What I've got works very well, but it can work a bit better. And I need upload speed because of the video that goes out. That takes quite a lot of bandwidth. For only two quid extra a month. I thought that was a bloody bargain. But they have to send me a new router, so that's coming on Monday. And it's one of those all-day appointments. And oh god, start at eight between eight a.m. and nine p.m. I kid you not. Eight a.m. and nine p.m. So what I've done, I spoke to Ronnie today on the phone, my mate on the phone, and um, uh, I said, "Well, I have to leave the leave the house at a certain time. Can you be here then?" for the night period, because obviously I've got to go to work after this. If it doesn't come, it might well come by then. I don't know. And he said, yes. So that's Andy. So 300 meg, meg router arriving. So that's very exciting. Um, let's have a look there. Hello to Anthony. Latvia sends regards. Greetings, Anthony. I'm very, very big in Latvia, apparently. <laughs> Some of the Latvians, by the look of the pictures there. Uh, thank you to Adam, who sent me... A little Facebook message. Did you know there's a Cartoon Plus? That it... I, I'm not quite sure how this works. They... They do a new cartoon stream every four hours. Check that out. So is, are these actually... So let me give you the where it is now. Okay, so... Let me just find this for you. I want to just... Yeah, that's right. If you type in... On Facebook, this is Cartoon Plus, OK? You'll see a picture of Tom and Jerry and lots of other cartoons. It says that they do live cartoons. It says there's a new stream every four hours. I, I'm not quite sure how that works. Are they just playing out cartoons or is someone making new cartoons all the time? So that's interesting, isn't it? Because, of course, it's very different how you do cartoons now, years ago. They would have lots of bits of paper, well, not paper, um, uh, what's that stuff? You know, like, like see-through plastic. Oh, what's it called? Film. It's film. It's film, isn't it? And someone would literally sit there painting onto the film separate pictures, and then they'd run it all together, and that would be your cartoon. It's all done on computers now. I must say I saw a new Tom and Jerry a little while ago. Oh, it's just coming up to midnight, and it's it's about to become Friday, boys and girls. Oh, that, that, hang on a minute. Let me just get my birthdays up for today, because otherwise I'll lose them, and it'll all be a bit of a pain. There we go. That's today's... Oh, there's only one today. Oh, I won't bother then. <laughs> well, I will bother. I'll read it out in a bit, but um, 
Yes, otherwise I'll miss them. Uh, yes, but now, of course, it's all done on computer. And uh, I saw a new Tom and Jerry, and I, I didn't really like it. it. It just didn't do it for me. It might be because I'm just used to the old one. Leon says it's just playing Tom and Jerry. Oh, is that the original Tom and Jerry that it's playing, is it? Oh, right, OK. I thought someone was sitting there making new cartoons and putting them straight out. There we go. It's Friday. Welcome to Friday morning, boys and girls. It's Friday morning at midnight here on United Kingdom Talk. It certainly is. Right. OK. That's interesting, isn't it? So thank you for that, Adam. Um, oh, is that another couple of messages there? Hang on a minute. I've got to read these out. Let me have a look. Uh, no, that's done, isn't it? Good, so it's just playing Tom and Jerry at the moment. Good. Uh, some other stories I've seen here. Now, if you are a lover of records, you know, vinyl, then check this out. Look. Three decades after it abandoned vinyl production, Sony says it's going to start making records again on the back of surging demand for the retro music format. I tell you what, let's open the phone line. Yeah, our phone line's open now. If you want to call in about anything at all, either anything we're talking about or something else, then you can call in now. We've got a local London number up there. 020-8144-3477 is my local London number. Okay, 020-8144-3477 is my local London number. If you've got Skype, you could Skype in. Uh, my Skype is United Kingdom Talk, all one word. So Skype in United Kingdom Talk or phone in 020 3477 Or if you just want to sit there and carry on listening to what I'm chatting around, that's OK as well. Um, a factory southwest of Tokyo will be churning out freshly pressed records by March next year. Sony Music Entertainment said on Thursday. Do you, do you buy records still? Do you buy records? I had this whole conversation, actually, today with uh, my very, very, very dear good friend, uh, Ray Reynolds. And um, we were talking about why I gave up DJing recently. It was only a few weeks ago I, I completely came out of it. Um, I, I do do a night, uh, a Saturday night, actually, at Central Station, where I do play some, some music. But it's not really like club DJing that I did for years and years. 30-odd 30, 30 years I did club DJing. And uh, one of the big reasons was because I, I'd moved on to laptop. I mean, some years ago, we're going back at least 10 years since I moved over to, to onto laptop. And it, it was at that point the job became incredibly boring. Incredibly boring. I started on seven-inch singles. There's one here. I, I dread to think that some, a lot of people don't won't even know what that is now. That is a seven-inch single, you see. And then I moved on to 12-inch singles. I don't think I've got one here, have I? Oh, hang on, what's that over there? Then I went on to 12-inch 12 12 singles, which were basically, you know, extended versions of the sevens. Uh, from there to CDs, and that was all good. And when you wanted another record, you see you had to flick through a record. Flick, 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 flick. Oh, that one, let's play that one. And then when you used to buy the record... You would buy a brand new record and it would be covered in this cellophane and you break the cellophane and the smell. I mean, I could smell it now. The, the smell of opening those brand new records was something else. It really was. So we moved from there to CDs. Now, that was still OK because you still had to flick through CDs or pages or things like that. That was fine. You see, the thing is, when you're DJing, perhaps club DJ, and, you know, you, you can be getting towards the end of the record and you've got the next record ready, or CD. And you suddenly decide that the next record is not right for that moment. And with 15 seconds to go, you whip off the needle, chuck the other record back over there, or the CD, put the next one on, quickly line it up, and it's all, oh, go, 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 bang, and it's on. Never made a mistake, like never, never, never got there. Not in time. You had like fifty, sometimes ten seconds to go. No, that's the wrong one. Off, off. Line the next one up. That one's faded. Quit on and on and mix. S laptops boring. Drag and drop. Drag and drop. So easy. So easy and so incredibly boring. That's one of the reasons I gave up the uh, DJ and that. And I didn't really like the. Don't really like a lot of the R and B music at the moment now either. Hmm. I was had a good old conversation with Ray Reynolds about that. Anyway, do you buy records? 
What's the last record you bought? Why don't you call in and let me know? 020 3477 A factory southwest of Tokyo will be churning out freshly pressed records by March next year, Sony Music Entertainment said on Thursday. So, I mean, if they're leaving it till March, I'm imagining here they're going to go into this big time. You know, they're obviously setting up something big to start churning them out again. Now, when it comes to CDs, I mean, to listen to a CD, it is perfect, isn't it? There's no crackle or anything like that. But I always found it easier, much, much easier, to have a CD get damaged than it ever was a record. There weren't many of my records that were played hundreds of times that had a scratch on them that made them drump. OK, some of them might be a bit click, click, occasionally. But nothing to write home about. CDs, once they were damaged, that was it, wasn't it? You couldn't do anything about it. With a record, sometimes if your record jumped, you could recast that groove simply by pushing on the on the head where the needle is when you get to the dub. And sometimes you could recut that groove in. Not always, but you could actually repair a record. Once a CD was gone, that was it. You couldn't do anything about a CD once it had gone wrong. Hello, who's calling in, please? I've been at the UDJ once or twice. Is that Heidi? She's love. Hello, Heidi. Why are you calling tonight from an unknown number? Usually I've got your number there. I know. Oh, have you? Yeah. Yeah, oh, I've got your number today. It doesn't matter anyway. Hang Hello, on Heidi. Hang so on you... a minute. Let me rectify that. No, it problem. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So, Heidi, when you... Ca... Oh, she's gone. <laughs> Get a call back on one of the numbers I know. Because <laughs> what happens when you call in, if if um, you're a sort of regular person, I'll put your name on there so I can say, oh, hello, it's Heidi calling in now. So we'll wait for her to call in again. Uh, she used to come to quite a few of the venues I DJed at. Uh, there were the, I think the main, the main one for her would have been Harpo's in Ells Court. Um, the Penny Farthing in Hammersmith. Let me think, where else would she have come to? I don't know if she ever came to the Black Cap. Uh, did I do another one in old school? Oh, Reflex in Putney. She would have come to all those places like that. Uh, the story goes on. The Japanese firm stopped making vinyl records in 1989 as consumers flocked to compact discs and other emerging music technologies. Major music market Japan produced nearly 200 million records a year in the mid-70s, according to the country's Recording Industry Association. 200 million records a year. Sony was a major global player in the development of CDs as well. So there we are. Um, there we go. That's Heidi now. Hello, Heidi. Hello, love. So where, where did I first meet you? Was it the Harpo's? Yes. It was Harpo's, wasn't it? Yeah, I was playing yes. records there. It wasn't CDs yet, was it? No, it wasn't CDs. No, no, we didn't have a CD machine then. No, there were no CD machines. Although we did have no. C We had karaoke discs, didn't we? Because we used to do the karaoke there. Well, you did. Harper. Well, I did. Yeah, I, I put the mu I put the CDs on, and you did. You ever sing? I think you sung with me once. I'm sure you yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. And remember, we did that other thing, Queen of the Scene, together. Oh God, that's hilarious. Do you remember that? And then, oh, that was and then so some funny. some some bloke had a go at me because he thought I was being cruel to you. He didn't see the comedy side of it, did he? Do you remember that? No. Oh, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Well, mind your own bloody thing, business. We're, over, we're doing and comedy. And the thing is, it was all worked out beforehand what we were going to do. We knew exactly what we were doing. Yeah, I told you. Right, as you come up, I'm going to push you down the stairs or something like that it was, wasn't it? I can't remember exactly. What yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was a great yeah, place. We all, yeah, we'd all have our little um, things, wouldn't we? Yeah, yeah. That was a great <laughs> place to work, wasn't it? Yeah, it's, it's such a laugh. Aye. Such a laugh. Mm. That's a, um, it's a Japanese, what is it, or oh, what's that place? Is it Yong, Yong Wong? What is it called now? It's called Wagamama now. Wagamama. I knew it was something. It's one of those now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Do they still have a club downstairs or not? No. That's nothing now. Because that, for a while, it was um, a ping pong place, wasn't it? You'd go down well, there and play it, ping pong. 
you know, table yeah, tennis. It used it used to be a club. Yeah. And then that shut down, and then it's been shut down for a while now. So I don't know what's going to happen with it. No, it's closed again now, is it? I don't know. It's oh. just closed. I don't know what's going on. It's it's a long time now since I um since I drove past it. I it used to take my sat nav used to take me that way. It doesn't take me that way anymore. I don't know why that is. Uh, Kevin <coughs> Webster says my CD player takes two hundred CDs. Well, all in all all in a go. Is it like a uh, well, oh and you just oh ah, yes. Say love unless it's bloody Russia or yeah. I? space. Do what? What, 200 CDs at once? Yeah, I think it's one of those machines you can put loads in there and you, you just push buttons and select which one, like a CD jukebox type thing, I would get, I would imagine. It'd have to be a CD jukebox. Yeah, yeah. There's, so no, there's no DJ system capable of taking 200 CDs at once. Oh, yeah, I think there is. It'd be like a jukebox type thing. No, no not on... Um, not a CD, not a DJ setup. Oh, no, 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 not a DJ setup. You can only put yeah. two in at the same time on those ones, Heidi. Oh, dear. Anyway, how are you? What have you been doing? I'm all right, love. I've just been listening to you. Um, yes, we first met in Harpo's. Yeah. Um, have been to the Black Cat. Oh, you have? I, I couldn't mean, remember where you, where yeah. you've been there or not. I think I remember you yeah. in heaven. Yeah, I've been in heaven. Yeah. I was norm normally find me in the star bar. A star bar in heaven, yes. I remember that, yeah. 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 I haven't been in um, there since I stopped working there. It's got, that's about 10 years old, uh, 10 years ago now as well, believe it or not, since I stopped working there. Do you remember um, Peter Harris, the young barman that used to work in the star bar? Um... Who then um, went to become... Peter Harris, no. No. Who's he? Yes, DJ Blue Peter. Oh, Blue Peter, yes, yes. Well, he came... I, I met up with him about about five years, four or five years ago now. I was doing the back room in uh, the Two Brewers on a Saturday night just while their DJ was off for a while. And uh, that was quite nice, doing playing house all night long, you know. Yeah, well, the first time I met him, he was, he was, a, he was only barman. And he had the um, middle bar. All oh, right, well, all on his start. own, yeah. Yeah. And I didn't he know he was a barman. Bar, he ran that bar like, like nothing. <laughs> he, he, do you know what I mean? He could run that bar f asleep. He was good at it, was he? <laughs> he was really, he was the best barman that club ever oh, had, wow. seriously. Yeah, yeah. And Gosh. then he went on to become a DJ. Wow, that's and it, isn't it? It's like and Andy, and, good one. Well, it's like Andy Weston, you know Andy? Andy Weston? Yes, yes he, he, he was a barman at Harpo's, wasn't he? He was barman yes, at Harpo's. He and he became a big-time DJ, record producer, remixer. He's done really well. And do you know what? Um, he was saying on his Facebook the other day, uh, how it was funny, you know, years ago he was looking, going out clubbing every night. Now he's quite happily spending time in his garden, uh, which oh, I, yeah. I replied, I said, are you copying me? Because that's exactly the same as what's going down on me. He's, and, and he replied, Chris, you don't realise what a big influence you were over me when you were DJing. Isn't that a lovely thing to write? Actually, I was really... I'm gonna say, I, I'm actually, I'm... Just about to say the same thing, actually. Do you know who got me into DJing in the first place? You? Do, where, where have you DJed then? At home. Oh, right. Me. I've got my... Yeah, you Was and that... Lily Lemon. Oh, Lily Lemon. Is, she, is he still running Iceland? He's doing an Iceland, isn't he, in Fulham? Yeah, I thought he was I think week. he is, yeah. Yeah, he must... Is he in his 60s yet? He must be in his 60s by now. Gosh, where's that time going? Uh, 60, uh, five, I think. Is he really? Think Gosh, so. can't believe it. All right, Heidi, well, I better go then, darling. It's been lovely talking to you tonight. And I worked at Reflex. I know, darling. Sweet dreams to you. I kiss, kiss. Uh, bye. Bye.
bye bye, my love. There we are, Heidi calling in from um, uh, uh, Fulham. I'm sure she's in Fulham there. Right, I'm going to do today's uh, birthdays, boys and girls, uh, and yesterday's birthdays as well. We'll start off with yesterday's birthdays. And uh, happy birthday yesterday to Roberts. Yes, indeed, it was Robert's birthday yesterday. I'll never forget you, Robert. Robert actually helped me move here years ago when I moved to Bracknell, here to Television Centre Bracknell, Television Centre Bracknell, when I moved here in 1992. Roberts, Robert Coppins and uh, his other half at the time helped me move and carried boxy, boxes from there. And uh, yeah, so I've always remembered that, Robert. Happy birthday to you for um, Thursday, for yesterday, OK? Uh, today's birthday is boys and girls. Happy birthday. Oh, my God. It's, she's with us as well tonight. Diane. Happy birthday, Diane. Just one tiny little year older than me, aren't you? Diane Jab's birthday today. Happy birthday to you, Diane. Lots of love to you, my love. All right. It's always a pleasure to see your little smiling face appear on the timeline there. Uh, happy birthday today to Immy, who's 32 years old today. Immy, I first met. Uh, while I was doing karaoke at the city of Quebec. He's a lovely chap, he is. Happy birthday, Imi Cezenaz. Is that how you say it? Cezenaz. 32 years old today. Happy birthday. Uh, Shiv. Shiv is 30 today. Another one of our karaoke girls. She used to come along to the Golden Lion in Sydney, where we were, for about two years there, weren't we? Happy birthday to you, Shiv. Happy birthday today to Mick Nash. 60 years old today. To Troy Turner, 45 years old today. I hope the DJ is going to write to uh, Troy. And to the lovely Nathan Turner. Now, Nathan, uh, him and his other half, they used to run a place called the Golden Lion in King's Cross. There's a lot of Golden Lions I've worked out of, uh, actually. And he uh, used to make a beef curry when I was eating meat. And I never used to eat curries or anything like that. But he made it, and it was absolutely delicious, although he put a lot of spice in it one day and nearly blew our heads off. Me and John Ward, it was, wasn't we? We were sitting there eating or trying to, <laughs> trying to, <laughs> trying to eat this curry, and the sweat was pouring off our heads. Anyway, happy birthday to you as well, Nathan, today, all right? Let's sing happy birthday, gang. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. All right. Happy birthday, boys and girls. That's it for the show today. Uh, it's Friday now. So Friday night means it's karaoke tonight at Central Station Bar in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross. Show starts at 8.30. If you want to come along and sing with us all or just want to come and watch everyone else, you're very, very welcome to be to, to come along. It's free entry, boys and girls. OK, so that's karaoke tonight and every Friday, starting at 8.30 and finishing at midnight. That's tonight, Friday night. Thanks so much for watching and listening to the show today. I'll see you again very soon. Enjoy your Friday. Cheerio now.